What is the truth about PSA testing? Uh, the many claims made by physicians and prostate cancer awareness groups about getting tested, getting treated, or risk dying, true or false? Welcome to Health Drum. I'm Dr. Bert Vorstman, a urological surgeon and former researcher, and this channel is all about patient empowerment and medical truths. By the way, Health Drum provides material for educational and informational purposes only and is not a substitute for professional medical advice. The links to the disclaimer and the material in this video are in the description below. And if this is your first time on the channel and you'd like to get fact-based healthcare information, then go ahead and subscribe for me. Okay, so let's get into it and start sorting out medical fact from medical fiction. So what do patients expect from their doctor during a consultation? So when patients go to see their doctor, what do they expect from their doctor? They expect brutal honesty, care that's recommended and delivered in their very best interests, transparent and courteous communication, only having tests and treatments that are absolutely necessary, and getting medical recommendations that are grounded in irrefutable and reproducible scientific data. As well, they expect care with realistic expectations and not fear-driven. But let's review some very surprising and unsettling truths about medical care. So there are several hard truths about today's medical system that should concern most healthcare consumers. Only about 11% of medical treatments are of known benefit. Standard of care is a legal term and not a scientific one. Healthcare is financially driven and there are many barriers to routine healthcare access. As well, medical errors are the third leading cause of death behind heart disease and cancer. Sadly, Healthcare guidelines are usually not evidence-based, although labeled standard of care. So let's now examine prostate cancers. Are they all equal and potentially dangerous, or is this mostly an exaggeration? So not all prostate cancers are the same or potentially deadly. In fact, most prostate cancers are outlived, and most grow very sluggishly, taking some 40 years or more from the time of mutation to reach the size of about one centimeter. The grade three cell within the Gleason 6 is a bogus cancer, as the grade three lacks the hallmarks of cancer. Physicians are quite aware of this fact, but choose to ignore it. And only some 10 to 15% of prostate cancers are high grade and potentially dangerous. As well, prostate cancer is a multifocal disease and in some 80 to 90% of cases is associated with two or more growth within the prostate and not necessarily of the same grade. Also, prostate tissue is impacted by field effects, meaning that the tissue has been sensitized to develop other cancers of unpredictable grade at some point in the future. So let's drill down on PSA testing. Does that save significant numbers of lives? So let's get straight to the bottom line with respect to PSA testing. Urologists' own studies have concluded that PSA testing fails to save significant numbers of lives. As well, there are no major trials that show any meaningful reduction in all-cause mortality and most men diagnosed with prostate cancer through PSA screening die from something else regardless of treatment. Unsurprisingly, also, the PSA test fails to meet the criteria for being a useful screening test. Additionally, there's no evidence that the prostate exam, DRE, or digital rectal examination save significant numbers of lives. Urinary and sexual symptoms are not early warning signs of prostate cancer, but simply signs of benign prostate enlargement and aging. Yet, despite the failure of PSA testing to save significant numbers of lives, PSA-based screening was still FDA-approved, and despite being a failure, 
PSA testing is still included in prostate cancer treatment guidelines and protocols. So why is the PSA test a highly unreliable marker for prostate cancer? So here's a screenshot of some of the many reasons as to why the prostate-specific antigen blood test or PSA test is a highly unreliable marker for prostate cancer. The specific label in prostate-specific antigen is false. It's not specific for prostate cancer or for the prostate. The levels of 0 to 4 being normal are absolutely false and made up. The PSA is mostly wrong with a false positive rate of about 78%. The PSA level cannot distinguish between meaningful and non-meaningful prostate cancers. And big PSAs are usually due to big prostates. In fact, the PSA is not a useful screening test as it fails to meet the criteria for being a useful screening test. So here are even more reasons why PSA testing is undependable. A low or so-called normal PSA does not mean no cancer. A high PSA doesn't mean you have cancer. High-grade prostate cancer may produce little or no PSA and go undetected. PSAs fluctuate normally throughout the day and between labs. In fact, PSA fluctuations of 30 to 50% within months are common even without cancer. PSAs are easily raised or lowered by various benign processes. PSAs can be artificially elevated because of prostate enlargement, prostatitis, ejaculation, medical intervention, and so on. PSA levels can be artificially lowered by statins, prostate medications, and thiazide diuretics, as well of the many other biomarkers claimed to be useful in the prostate cancer arena, none have been proven to save significant numbers of lives. So what typically happens to patients whose PSA is elevated beyond the so-called normal range? Invariably, patients with abnormal PSAs are sent to the urologist for an MRI and prostate needle biopsy. Prostate MRIs are not perfect and troubled by false positives and false negatives. Prostate needle biopsies carry significant risks for infection, bleeding, urinary retention, erectile dysfunction, and many more potential complications. As well, they are impacted by gross sampling errors in that the 12 core biopsy typically samples only about 0.1% of the prostate to leave the physician uninformed about the 99.9% .9 rest of the prostate. The biopsies inevitably lead to overdiagnosis of cancers that were never going to cause harm, and the biopsies invariably lead to overtreatment of low risk disease. Sadly, these treatments for prostate cancer are associated with many significant potential complications. And turbocharging this dangerous cascade of testing and treatment for prostate cancer are the many financial incentives. All in all, raised PSAs commonly expose patients to health dangers and not health benefits. So PSA testing is highly unreliable and fails to save significant numbers of lives. So why do physicians keep recommending them? So despite the knowledge that PSA testing fails to save significant numbers of lives, and that physicians are fully aware of these results, physicians continue to recommend PSA testing. Why? Because healthcare guidelines are commonly consensus-based and not evidence-based. Physicians in academia face many political, financial, and malpractice pressures. Insurance industry reimbursements influence practice norms, keeping PSA testing entrenched. Men's health advocacy groups continue to recycle prostate cancer misinformation, and public health messaging about prostate cancer is fear-based and not outcome-based. As well, once a test is so-called standard practice or standard of care, 
It's rarely removed despite being a danger to health. So what's the story with men's health and prostate cancer awareness groups? Why do they continue to recycle misinformation about PSA testing? So why are we exposed to all this prostate cancer misinformation? Usually all you need to do is to follow the money. In the prostate cancer arena, there's significant financial influencing by big pharma and big tech. The prostate cancer advocacy and support groups rely on financial support from them. As well, support is aided by misguided health professionals and the claims made by prostate cancer awareness groups are based on exploiting fear of the cancer label. This is further enabled by the social media marketing of false claims about prostate cancer and getting tested. In fact, most of the information circulating in the prostate cancer arena is based on recycled misinformation. So let's drill down on the most fundamental of prostate cancer treatment questions. Do prostate cancer treatments save significant numbers of lives? So this is a screenshot you should pay particular attention to. Again, the references to this material are in the description below. The bottom line is that prostate cancer treatments do not change long-term outcomes. At about 12 years, treated and untreated patients have similar survival rates. At about 15 years, treated and untreated patients have similar survival rates. And at about 20 years, Treated and untreated patients have similar survival rates, except that untreated patients avoided the complications commonly experienced by those treated for prostate cancer. This lack of curative benefits makes an absolute mockery of claims for prostate cancer testing, prostate cancer treatment guidelines, prostate cancer awareness, and men's health programs. All in all, prostate cancer testing and treatments only expose men to health dangers. So we've just discovered that PSA testing fails to save significant numbers of lives, and that at about 20 years, prostate cancer treatments fail to save significant numbers of lives. So what's being done to protect patients? So how do we protect patients from all of this prostate cancer misinformation? Tests and treatments must be grounded in irrefutable and reproducible scientific data. Outcomes must be measured in overall survival. Patients must be informed that prostate cancer screening tests have no proven life-saving ability and that prostate cancer testing and treatments expose patients to significant health dangers. As well, at about 20 years, treated and untreated prostate cancer patients have similar survival rates, meaning that prostate cancer treatments fail to save significant numbers of lives. So what's urgently needed for the prostate cancer arena? We need to develop new tests and treatments for prostate cancer that are safe and actually work and save significant numbers of lives. Finally, We need to rebuild the guidelines with science-based protocols and not based on opinions, beliefs, and junk science. So let's recap. In this video, what is the truth about PSA testing? You learned that PSA testing is highly unreliable, that it fails to save significant numbers of lives, that it leads commonly to over-detection of insignificant disease, which then commonly leads to significant overtreatment, and these tests and treatments commonly expose patients only to health dangers. The bottom line, there are no scientifically proven survival benefits for PSA testing or PSA-based screening for prostate cancer. To learn more about routine medical care, self-care, and digital health, Check out these other videos, and if you like them, please share them with your friends.